Aloha everyone. Thank you for joining me today. My name is Julie Okamura and today we're going to be talking a little bit about fall prevention. Now you may have noticed out in the community that there's more and more information about fall prevention out there. And you might be wondering to yourself, why is falls prevention such a very important topic? A quick look at the national fall statistics will help explain why. Each year, one in four Americans aged 65 and over falls. Falls are the leading cause of fatal injury and the most common cause of non-fatal trauma-related hospital admissions amongst that group of people. Falls result in more than 2.8 million injuries treated in emergency departments, which includes 800,000 hospital admissions and over 27,000 deaths. The total cost of fall-related injuries in 2015 was $50 billion, and Medicare and Medicaid shouldered 75% of those costs. Now, the projected cost for this year's fall-related injury um, has increased to $67.7 billion. Now, for people that fall and sustain an injury, or for even people that fall and aren't seriously injured, Falling can affect that person's quality of life. And the reason is that even after just one fall, people oftentimes become afraid of falling again. And once they become afraid to fall, they start to limit their activities and they start to limit their social engagements. And as they stop moving around as much and stop participating, participating in as many activities, they start to decline functionally and physically. That physical decline can then lead to depression, to social isolation, and to some feelings of helplessness. So as we see, falls are a leading cause of injury and death among seniors. They pose a significant cost to not only the healthcare system, to, but to the patient as well. And most importantly, falls can really affect a person's quality of life. The thing about falls is that they are preventable. Many of the falls that occurred that led to the statistics that we saw earlier didn't have to happen. And that's why falls prevention is such an important topic. Now, a lot of information has been collected on those people that did have to seek medical attention for their injuries. And from that information, researchers were able to identify some of the key risk factors for falling. I'm gonna share them here and we'll go over each one individually. Okay, the key risk factors for falls include use of medications, vitamin D deficiency, vision problems, home hazards or dangers, foot pain or footwear, difficulties with walking and balance, and lower body weakness. Let's start by talking about medications. Now, as we grow older, it becomes more likely that we'll have to take medications to address some sort of medical condition that pops up. For some people, over time, they start to find that they're suddenly on a number of medications from a number of different doctors. Now, even just one medication can have side effects, which might make you drowsy or dizzy and could put you at a higher risk for a fall. Once you start taking more than one medication, you have an increased risk of the potential for interactions between those medications, which might further cause those types of um, conditions, the dizziness and the, the um, unbalanced feeling that could lead to a fall. So some things you can do to try to prevent that are one, as soon as you take, if you're taking a new medication, if you notice that you're having any of these sorts of side effects, dizziness, sleepiness, be sure to call your physician and report it. Because sometimes there are other medications that can be used to address the same condition, which won't cause those side effects in you. Okay. Another idea is to always carry a list of current medications with you. Okay. That means each time you add a medication, each time you take a medication off, that list needs to be updated. And you should take that list with you so that 
doctors, if you, especially if you see specialists and you're going to a lot of different doctors, they can look and see what you're on and make sure that the new medication they're prescribing for you won't interact with any of the other ones that you're already on. Another good idea um, is to regularly review that list of medications with either your doctor or a pharmacist. Now for people that are able to get all their medications from one pharmacy, it makes that task easy because that pharmacist at that pharmacy will have a record of all the medications you're on. Even if you happen to get your medications from here and there from different places, it's a good idea to, um, to keep go back to your list that you've made of all the medications you're on and have a pharmacist at one of those pharmacies review all the medications you're on to make sure that there won't be any bad interactions that might make you feel dizzy and cause you to fall. Okay. The next risk factor that we're going to talk about is vitamin D deficiency. Now, there are just a few sources that we get vitamin D from. One of them, as many people know, is from the sun. The body's able to take sunlight and convert it into vitamin D. There actually aren't very many foods in which vitamin D naturally occurs. Fish and mushrooms are just a couple of foods, but because there aren't that many foods in which vitamin D is naturally occurring, there are other foods such as milk and cereals and orange juice which are fortified with vitamin D to help us get the uh, needed daily amount. Uh, we can also supplement our diet with vitamin D and that is taking tablets or capsules to make sure that we get enough. Okay. The reason that vitamin D uh, increases our risk or uh, deficiency in vitamin D increases our risk for fall is that vitamin D plays an important part in muscle function and muscle strength. So a lack of vitamin D can lead to weakness, muscle weakness, and which can cause you to have difficulty with your balance or with walking. Uh, a lack of vitamin D can also contribute to some muscle and joint pain as well as fatigue and depression and all of these things can make you stop moving around as much and contribute to a physical decline which then again puts you at a higher risk for a fall. If you suspect that you might be deficient in vitamin D because Perhaps you're not out in the sun as much, and I forgot to mention, it is recommended that people get out into the sun 15 to 20 minutes a day, at least three times a week. Because of COVID now, we actually haven't been, a lot of people haven't been leaving their, their homes, and so you might not be out in the sunlight as much. If you don't happen to eat the types of foods that do contain vitamin D or are fortified with vitamin D, you might be deficient in vitamin D. If you suspect that you are, um, it's best to consult with your doctor because the vitamin D deficiency is identified with a blood test which needs to be prescribed by your doctor. It's very important that you consult your physician to make sure that you are deficient in vitamin D before you start taking supplements. And the reason for that is that there are actually some problems that are caused by having too much vitamin D in your system and you want to be sure to avoid that. So again, consult your doctor if you feel that you might be lacking in vitamin D. Next, let's, let's talk about your vision. As we age, our vision becomes less clear. We have changes in our ability to perceive depth. Uh, we have a decrease in our peripheral vision, and we have difficulty accommodating to changes in lighting. Sometimes you also get, have problems such as cataracts or glaucoma, which which also interfere with our vision. So some strategies we can use to try to reduce our risk of falls due to visual changes is one, to have your vision checked at least once a year by, uh, by a doctor. And if you notice any visual changes throughout, during the year, you might want to have it checked even more frequently than that. Make sure that you use your glasses if you have prescription glasses. And uh, you may even want to consider using sunglasses outside if you have trouble accommodating to changes in bright light. One note I want to make is if you are the caregiver for somebody else, make sure that person has glasses on if he or she needs them so that his or her vision will be um, optimal. 
Most importantly, you want to make sure to provide adequate lighting because almost everybody as we age start to have more and more trouble seeing when the lighting is dim. A lot of people fall at night on their way to the bathroom. So it's very important to make sure that there's an adequate night light by the bed and adequate lighting on the pathway to the restroom. Okay. And that brings us to home safety. Okay. I've included here a link on my slides to the Centers for Disease Control Home Safety Checklist. And this is a great resource. It has a lot of information about how to make your home safer to prevent falls. I've included just a few pages from this checklist in the slide presentation. So you can see uh, what type of information is in there. Okay? Part of this resource includes a home safety checklist and it takes you through room by room and has you look for, for um, things that might be dangerous in your home. Okay? For example, as you walk through a room, is your does your furniture um, leave you enough space to pass through without tripping on it. For people that have just started to use an assist assisted device such as a walker or a cane, this becomes even more important. You want to make sure that the furniture is spaced out enough so that there's a clear pathway for you to get through. Throw rugs are always a problem. You want to make sure that if you do have rugs on the floor that maybe they're taped down and that so they're secured so the edges won't flip up and cause somebody to fall. Okay. You want to remove just general clutter so that there's a clear pathway for people to walk. Now that everything seems to be electronic, there are a lot of wires that need to be um, leading to the TV and to your computers. And oftentimes in the older homes, there aren't very many outlets. So you often see wires in inopportune places, in pathways where people are walking. So you might want to Find a way to reorganize the room so that the wires can be kept towards the walls, or maybe even hire an electrician to come and add more outlets into your home so that you can keep the wires in safe places and not across areas where people are walking. Okay, you want to take a look at your stairs and steps. Make sure there's adequate lighting there. Make sure that there's a handrail. Ideally, you want a handrail on both sides of the steps. Um, I know that's not always possible, but if you're able to install hand railings on both sides, that would be the safest. Uh, you want to make sure that there, there are any steps that are broken or uneven, or if you have a carpeted stairs and the carpet is torn, that these things are repaired. Okay. In the kitchen, sometimes if our function changes, or just as we get older and we know that it's not as safe for us to be climbing up onto high cabinets to, to reach things, it's a good idea to reorganize the kitchen so that you bring the things that you use most to a level where they're easy to get at. If you do find that you have to use a step stool, make sure you go out and get a nice, safe step stool with a handle and not use um, a chair. I've seen some people use little tiny um, stools to, to use as uh, to reach high places, to stand on to reach high places, and that's very dangerous. Okay, in the bathroom, you want to see, uh, you might need grab bars in the tub or by the toilet to help you sit to stand or get in and out of the tub safely. You might also need to put something on the ground so that the tub is not so slippery. Some people use a non-slip mat and others use little grip strips that you can lay inside the tub that will help to keep you from slipping inside the tub. Okay. In the bedrooms, the main thing I see in the bedroom is that people uh, need a nightlight by their bed that is safe, that's easy to access because oftentimes people are getting up during the middle of the night to go to the bathroom. So do be sure that there's um, a nightlight by your bed. Okay? Also make sure that the pathway from your bed to the bathroom is clear and that there's adequate lighting there. Okay? Just based on my experience, I've also added in some extra tips um, for you to help to make your home safer. Okay? As we saw back in the picture uh, before, here in Hawaii, we all keep our slippers by the door. And that entryway can be very crowded with shoes, especially during a party or some other event like that. 
Okay, so it's very important to try to keep the shoes out of the entryway, to keep them to the side. You might want to consider putting a chair by the door so that people who don't have um, good balance can sit to put on and take off their shoes. Uh, just remember in the bathroom that a towel bar is not the same as a grab bar and either is the toilet paper holder because I actually have seen people try to use the toilet paper holder to stand up and both of those are not mounted in the same way as a grab bar and oftentimes they'll break away from the wall when people try to put their weight on them and that causes a fall. Grab bars can be very useful in the bathroom but also remember that grab bars can be useful outside of the bathroom too. Some people um, will put them at the top of a stairway because oftentimes the railing doesn't quite reach to allow you to hold on to something when you're going up that last step at the top of the stairs. That might be a place that you might want to use a grab bar as well. Okay, be sure to clean up spills, especially um, dropped ice cubes because when they melt, they're very difficult to see and I've had some people that have slipped on water on the floor that was there because of a dropped ice cube that didn't get picked up. Uh, make sure that when people have a chair to sit on, especially people who are having a harder time with the mobility, make sure that they have a sturdy chair. It's preferable to, if it's an armchair, um, but make sure they're not sitting on something with wheels that can move around when they're trying to stand up or sit down on it. Okay? You have to be very careful about your pets because I have had a number of clients too who have been injured when a neighbor's dog or even their own dog jumped on them and knocked them down or they tripped over the dog while they were walking. Okay. Now in the age of mobile phones, it's, it's more easy for us to have a phone with us at all times or some kind of call device that you can press for help if you were ever to fall down at home and not be able to get to the phone. For those people that only have a landline inside of the house, it might be a good idea to move that landline to a low table or to maybe even floor level, a shelf on floor level, so that if you were ever to land up on the, end up on the floor, you'd be able to reach the phone to call for help. I have had a couple of people too who fell down and weren't able to reach the phone because it was up on a high shelf. Okay. Another great device that I recommend for people is um, this one, and it's called a Blackout Buddy. This one's uh, put out by the American Red Cross. There are other brands uh, of this same type of device, but this one was uh, convenient to uh, explain to you. So uh, what this is, is it's an emergency nightlight. So you plug it into an outlet in a room that you're commonly in, and if the power were to ever go out, this nightlight goes, it shines like a beacon. So you're never ever left in the dark when your power goes out. And that nightlight, when, if the lights go out and that light goes on, you can walk over to that light and pull it out of the outlet and then use it as a flashlight to go and get your other lanterns and flashlights that you might need or to get to, to where you need to go. Okay. You can keep that nightlight in, or you can keep that light in the outlet all year round and you can even use it as a night light on the days when you're not using it as an emergency light. It's a really handy um, device to have and I highly recommend you get one for your home or maybe even a few. You can put them, maybe one in your bedroom, one in your living area, one in the kitchen, the places that you frequent so that if the lights ever go out you're not left in the dark. In the bedroom, uh, one very handy item uh, for a lot of people is this bed transfer handle. Now the bed transfer handle isn't really meant to keep you from falling out of bed, but it's there to help people to get in and out of bed. So when they're going to lie down, sometimes they need a little extra help. Oftentimes they're holding on to the caregiver to get up from bed. So instead of that, it's much safer to put a handle there. The handle fits in between the mattresses and sometimes has a strap so you can strap it right into the bed and it's pretty secure and you can use that instead of pulling up on somebody or pulling up on a walker which is not very stable. In the bathroom, many of you have seen the shower chair which, is, which goes right into the tub or shower stall uh, which allows the person to sit and bathe from a much safer position than standing. Okay, I also wanted to mention that there's something called a tub transfer bench and as you can see in the picture, this tub transfer bench 
uh, sits half out of the shower or half out of the tub and half in the tub. This allows a person to sit down while they're on the outside of the tub and from a sitting position bring their legs over the sides of the tub. That's much safer than people trying to stand up and lift their legs over the tub wall. Okay. For people who are using a shower chair or a tub transfer bench, it's often handy to have a handheld shower head. And as you see in the picture, this one is uh, mounted a little bit lower, so it's easy to reach, and it allows people to shower safely from a seated position. Other things that might help in the bath uh, are a long-handled bath brush to scrub your back and your feet, a long washcloth with loops to make it easy to scrub your back, and also, as we mentioned earlier, a bath mat. Um, now a bath mat, I've found in the bathroom, sometimes it's, uh, it's better to get actually the mats that are made as, to use as an entry mat. They tend to be bigger and they tend to be flatter and they also absorb the water. So it can help to um, make sure that your floors are not slippery when the person comes out of the tub. Okay. Uh, other bathroom items that might be helpful are an elevated toilet seat. For people who have very, very low toilets and have trouble standing up from that very low surface. Uh, those raised toilet seats also come with handles if the person needs, a little ex to need, needs to use their arms for a little extra boost. Or for people that uh, need, maybe their toilet height is the right height, but they just need something to help them to stand up. Um, if you're not able to attach grab bars to the walls, there are also toilet safety rails which attach right to the toilet and it attaches right where the seat joins the toilet and, uh, and it provides rails there for, to help the person to stand up from the toilet as well. Okay. That was indoor safety. Now outdoor safety is a little less predictable. You really don't know what's going to happen out there so you just need to be aware um, watch out for curbs and sidewalks and, and concrete blocks in the parking lots, uh, uneven terrain, wet and slippery surfaces. A lot of times there's metal plates on the sidewalks or on the roads as you're crossing the street, and all of these can become very slippery and contribute to a fall. Sometimes people don't need an assistive device like a cane or a walker to get around inside their house, but it might be a good idea to take it when they go outside just because um, it's so unpredictable about what the ground is going to be like out there. So if you're having problems with balance, you might want to consider using a cane or a walker just for when you go out. Okay, the next risk factor uh, is foot pain and footwear. And what I really recommend is if you're having any sort of foot pain that's making you walk a little differently and maybe um, changing your balance, you should go and see a doctor or a podiatrist to have um, have that pain addressed and try to take care of it sooner than later. Because the longer you walk around um, with decreased balance because of that foot pain, the more at risk you are for a fall. Okay? You should always try to wear properly fitting, uh, sturdy shoes uh, with non-skid soles. And for some people, you might need to wear those shoes indoors and outdoors. So a lot of people will get a pair of shoes for wearing inside the house and have another pair for wearing outside the house. If you have a brace, for instance, if you've had a stroke or some other condition, um, and you need a brace to help you uh, keep your foot so you don't drag it, keep your foot up so you don't drag it, be sure to wear those devices as well. You really want to try to avoid high heels or very floppy slippers, and this is the common thing that I see, are really old, your favorite old comfortable slippers, but they've become worn and stretched out, and they don't stay on your feet very well. You want to make sure that the slipper, if you're going to use it, is properly fitting. And ideally, if you're using a slipper or a sandal, you want something with a strap that's going to keep it on your foot securely so that you don't trip over the footwear. Okay. Be sure to periodically check the bottoms of your shoes because sometimes the tops look fine. They're not worn at all. But when you turn it over, you'll find that the bottom, the tread has been worn off and it's very slick and slippery. Don't use those shoes anymore. You need to get a new pair that has good tread on the bottom to be safe. Okay? Avoid walking in stocking feet because it's very slippery. Okay? And I've, I've found that a lot of people don't want to wear shoes because it's just 
so humbug to put it on, put on shoes. So I recommend a couple of aids that can help you on the next slide. Uh, help you to put your shoes and socks on a little bit more easily. One of them is called a sock aid. And as you can see, it's like a tube with a rope attached to it. You put the sock on it, and you can then slip the sock onto your foot and pull that device out with the ropes. And that helps you to get the sock onto your foot. Also, a long-handled shoehorn can help you to get the shoes on more easily. The next risk factor is physical mobility. And as um, we saw in the list, this is talking about decreased uh, balance in walking and, and lower extremity weakness. Okay. So physical mobility really includes a person's walking, how they're getting in and out of bed, um, transfers, how they're going on and off the toilet, on and off the floor, in and out of the car, all of those things. Your physical mobility is largely determined by your flexibility, strength, your balance, and your posture. And all of these things can be improved with exercise. Okay. Now, a lot of people, when they hear the word exercise, they think, ugh, exercise. And they, they remember the saying from the 80s, no pain, no gain. And a lot of people avoid exercise because they say, I, I don't want any pain. It's too hard to exercise. I don't want to do it. But what I want to tell you is that you don't, exercise doesn't have to be painful or very hard in order to be beneficial. Okay? It's just very important that everybody keep moving. And it be, can be with simple movements. Um, pick something that you enjoy, like walking or gardening. Some people like to play tennis with their friends or pickleball. You could, well, in the past, we, there are a number of fall prevention exercise groups out there. But now in these COVID times, a lot of those groups are not meeting. So. There are um, online now socially distanced exercise programs that are available out there, which you might be able to tap into and follow along um, for some daily exercise. Okay. I just wanted to make mention of some, uh, something called evidence-based exercise programs, because you might come across that term at some time. And evidence-based exercise programs are actually exercise programs that have been proven by research to have an effect on, a positive effect on um, improving balance and reducing your fall risk. And I've listed a few here that are actually out uh, in the community here in Hawaii. Tai Chi for Health, Enhanced Fitness, Silver Sneakers, and Move with Balance. And there, there are more out there. Unfortunately, again, because of COVID, um, they're not meeting in person. But um, looking online, you might be able to find some classes that, uh, that are meeting online, and we'll be able to, you'll be able to participate in them that way. If you haven't exercised before or haven't exercised in a long time, just remember that it's always safest to consult with your doctor first, because certain medical medical conditions may affect how you should exercise. Okay? Um, since we're all moving on to these online exercise programs now, you just want to make sure that uh, if you're home alone especially, that you don't attempt standing exercises or balance exercises that you don't feel comfortable with. Okay? You don't want to have a fall doing the fall prevention exercise program. Okay? Always start by doing exercises slowly and gently to get your body in, in the, uh, used to the idea of exercising again. Okay. When you're doing stretching, try not to bounce. That's something I commonly see is people bouncing on their stretches. You should hold your stretches gently and just hold them steady for the amount of time. Also very important not to hold your breath when you're exercising. Sometimes counting out loud can help you with that. Okay? And the most important thing, if any of the exercises cause you pain, just stop. Don't do them. Uh, if you feel that, or you notice a change in your flexibility or your strength, or if you've had a fall recently, um, you may be eligible for physical therapy services, so I would encourage you to talk to your doctor about getting a prescription for physical therapy. The great thing about physical therapy is that um, oftentimes, if it's medically necessary and you have a doctor's prescription, your insurance will help cover at least part of the cost. 
if you have Medicare, uh, Medicare does allow you $2,080 as an allowance uh, this year for physical therapy services with a doctor's prescription. Okay? Every year that amount goes up just a little bit, but this year it's $2,080. Okay? The important thing about exercise, we have to use our bodies or we're going to lose that physical function. For people who are looking for more information on falls prevention, I'd like to direct you to the National Council on Aging. And the website is uh, listed there, ncoa.org. Um, they have a wealth of information on falls prevention, um, including a national action plan that they've put together to try to um, reduce everyone's risks of fall, risk of falls and, uh, and make us all safer. I've also put some contact information for our own state uh, fall prevention consortium, which is a branch of the Department of Health. And if you want to find out um, what kind of fall prevention information and exercise groups there are locally, this is the place to call. Okay. Um, the main message I want you all to know is that falls are not an inevitable result of aging. We don't fall because we're getting older. Falls are absolutely preventable, and I hope some of the information presented today will help to make your life or the life of those you're taking care of a little safer. Thank you so much for joining me today. Take care and be healthy.